Um, Torah tells us in this week's parsha of the famous halacha of Ben Sora Mora, uh, the rebellious son who conducts himself in a very inappropriate way. His sins are not inherently so serious, but uh, such a young man who commits sins such as stealing from his parents for the purpose of uh, pursuing gluttonous desires, we're taught in the Talmud that this individual is considered to be on such a bad path that they should be killed by the basin. It's hard to even think about, but they should be killed by the basin before they go down a, a further bad path. And the Gemara famously says that actually there never was and never will be a Ben Mora. There are so many specific halachos that need to be fulfilled, so many specific qualifications in order for the uh, Ben Mora status to kick in that it, it's never going to happen. Rather, the Gemara says we should learn from it and, and receive reward for learning from it. The clear implication is there are lessons from the halacha. Even if, practically speaking, it doesn't occur, there are life lessons to learn from the story of Ben Sorimor, from the halacha of Ben Sorimor. And many people focus on lessons about education. The whole context is... is a young boy, a boy of around 12 years old, his interface with his parents. The Chafetz Chaim has a very interesting thought, expanding the lesson to people of all ages. And the Chafetz Chaim says, you know what this goes to show you? It goes to show that the fact that this young boy, this young man, is so focused on his physical gluttonous desires, there's no hope for him. And what that goes to show you is how core it is to who we are as people and how we lead our lives to think about how connected we are to our desires. Now, of course, we're all connected. We all, we all have all kinds of physical desires and, and many, many times we make the wrong decisions. We know that. that that's one of the great things about Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur because we can focus on a lot of the bad decisions we made over the course of the past year. But to just think about how central our desires are to that conversation. And to reflect on, it's not only about if I want to do the right thing or I want to do the wrong thing, but it's about trying to govern over my desires as opposed to my desires dominating my life decisions. And that's the lesson of Ben Mora. That we're not saying a situation is hopeless because any one sin is so terrible. We're saying a situation is hopeless because it's all about his desire. And I think that's, that's a very powerful thing to think about as we approach Rosh Hashanah. Not, not trying to get 100% score terms of doing the right thing that would be wonderful but that's that's a very steep hill for us but to just think about how do I give in to my desires and here I think is the real key is there even a fight I think it would be an amazing project maybe between now and Rosh Hashanah maybe longer to pinpoint one or two areas of our lives they are we find ourselves doing things that we regret because of our desires. It'd be all kinds of things. And really try to focus ourselves maybe in certain circumstances, maybe in a certain time of day. Maybe if we think we can commit to to not succumbing to our desires in those contexts, that's amazing. But even if we're not sure about that, but to tell ourselves, I'm not going to give in without a fight. The Chafetz Chaim's point is that we have this habit that once we have these strong desires, it's just an open and shut case. I have a desire for such and such a food. Boom. I have a desire to to say such and such about a person. Boom. Even if I sometimes falter, I have to at least make it a struggle. I have to at least put up a fight. I think if we think about that, it could be a remarkable merit for the year to come and, and possibly a very significant game changer in our lives. Have a wonderful Shabbos.